From Church Militant Studios, this is the Church Militant Evening News. Hello and thank you for joining us this Wednesday, March 22nd. I'm Hunter Bradford, along with James Fidua, here with Catholic News in Context. A quick programming note, though, be sure to go to YouTube at 7 p.m. Eastern Time tonight to watch our debut of Spotlight, Did McCarrick Make a Murderer? It's about McCarrick's connection to an infamous crime, and you won't want to miss it. But tonight, a priest wants to break the sacred seal of confession, a Catholic priest and a faithful prelate in Texas has a refreshing message for American Catholics, and an online Catholic school is put on hold while the school figures things out. Leading us off tonight, in a recent interview, Cardinal Raymond Burke made clear who really stands with the Pope and respects St. Peter's successor, and it's not the German bishops trying to change church teaching. We are the ones who love the Pope and are trying to, to help him to carry out his mission, whereas uh, these people who simply ignore uh, what uh, uh, Rome is saying to them, what the See of Peter is saying to them, uh, show that they, they have no respect for him, whatever. They are indeed the enemies of the Pope. I think it's clear any, any reasonable person can see that. Moving to Delaware, as the state tries to erase the seal of confession, one priest is actually calling for that very thing to happen. Father James Connell, a retired priest from the Archdiocese of Milwaukee, wrote an op-ed in USA Today where he says, No valid freedom of religion argument rooted in the absence of truth can provide a moral justification for sheltering perpetrators of abuse or neglect of children. He goes on to say, quote, governments should intervene. Church Milton spoke to Michael Hitchborn, president of the Lepanto Institute, who brought this story to light. Of course, every honest and faithful Catholic desires the protection of children and the punishment of those who would do them harm. But this can't be done at the expense of the sacred seal of confession. The Archbishop has an obligation to demand that Father Connell publicly recant his position or face punishment, including the possibility of excommunication. His war on the sacred sacrament of confession cannot be allowed to continue. A priest in the Archdiocese of Chicago doesn't like the USCCB's Eucharistic Revival Initiative, apparently because of all the focus on the Eucharist. On Tuesday, Father Louis Camelli published an article in Pro Gay America magazine, proclaiming the project could fail because the heavy emphasis that it places on Eucharistic devotion, such as pr processions, adoration, 40 hours, and Eucharistic miracles, as praiseworthy as these might be in themselves, does not capture the heart of the matter. The real challenge, he says, is not to understand, appreciate, and reverence the Eucharist as a sacramental object, no. The real challenge is to enter together the mystery of the Lord's self-sacrificing love made present and communicated in the Eucharistic action. And here to tell us more about Father Camelli's article and the Eucharistic revival is Church Militant's Nick Wiley. Nick, thanks for coming on. Thanks, James. Just to remind everyone real quick, the Eucharistic revival is a three-year plan by the USCCB in response to over 70% of Catholics not believing in the real presence. And it just so happens to cost tens of million dollars, you know. <laughs> the good yeah. parts of the program include advocating for Eucharistic processions, adorations, and other devotions. So when Father Camelli says those don't cut it, it's absolutely ridiculous to me at least, because parishes that have more adoration and processions are almost always the one with more people at Mass and laity that actually believe the faith. So after Camelli dismisses those beautiful events, he advocates instead for people participating at Mass. He writes, our engagement is not as spectators or passive recipients or even as half aware and distracted participants. No, it is to be full, conscious, and active. The challenge is to understand and know exactly what this means practically. In my mind, the real possibility of a Eucharistic revival hinges precisely on reclaiming our participation in the Eucharist. Well, Nick, I think it's safe to say that priests, clergy have all neglected in their duty to teach the laity about the Eucharist and just sort of, you know, light the fire in their hearts for the Mass. I mean, I don't have to tell you, whenever you go to church, all you got to do is look around at Mass and just see people are just incredibly underwhelmed. 
Yeah, James, a USCCV post on Facebook back in 2019 showed the results of the Pew Research study that found how few people believe in the Eucharist. It got 12, 1,200 responses, I'm sorry. Some of the things people were advocating for to help promote belief in the real presence were the things the bishops never bring up, such as bringing back communion rails, getting rid of lay people distributing Holy Communion, getting rid of communion in the hand, putting the tabernacle back front and center where it belongs, and others. I think people would also, you know, fully believe in the real presence if we were to, you know, bar certain high-level profile heretics from receiving it, maybe? That would probably work, Nick. But, you know, I think good for the bishops for trying to reignite the, the faith with this revival. But I can't help but feel they are trying to revive something that they themselves have let die. But, Nick, thank you very much for coming on, and hopefully we'll have you on again soon. Thanks, James. God bless. God bless. Thank you, gentlemen. Turning to the Diocese of Tyler, Texas, Bishop Joseph Strickland has a sobering message for Americans. In a tweet Monday, he warned, As our corrupt Biden-led government slides closer to collapse, it becomes more critical that we get our spiritual house in order. Repent, turn to God, atone for your sins, and resolve to live the truth no matter what. Jesus is about eternity. Of course, you'll find more from Bishop Strickland when you watch Strickland Speaks on our website, churchmilitant.com, courtesy of Virgin Most Powerful Radio. It's found under the videos category. And in this week's episode of Strickland Speaks, host Terry Barber questions if today's bishops are afraid to condemn homosexuality because that would require imitating Christ, who was crucified for speaking the truth. In response, Bishop Joseph Strickland takes it a step further. The world is devastated by the sexual immorality of all different kinds. Yeah. But to give the, the, the gay couple a pass because it's the politically correct thing to do, that's what's going on in Germany. And it's, there's money woven into it. Big time. There's all kinds of things. But, but I really believe there are too many bishops in the church that have no faith. In Oklahoma, a state board meeting on establishing the nation's first online Catholic charter school has been postponed. Statewide virtual charter school board chairman Robert Franklin decided the board needed more time after new board members were appointed since the last board's last meeting. Back in 2021, the Archdiocese of Oklahoma City applied for state sanctioning and taxpayer funding for St. Isidore of Seville Catholic Virtual School. It's intended to serve children in towns without a local Catholic school and add to the curriculum of already existing Catholic schools. A Detroit parish is displaying its rich collection of relics and resurrecting a Catholic tradition. In tonight's in-depth report, Church Milton's Christine Chrislieb takes us to the only church in the world named Swedish Heart. There were so many relics. In fact, we kept finding more and more relics in boxes, even cigar boxes, first-class relics. When relic curator Patricia Stefanoff accepted the job of organizing the parish's relics, she found an embarrassment of riches, more than a hundred authenticated first-class relics. You really can't display these relics without an authentic paper. And they're actually called authentics. So they bear a seal. Um, they're signed by a bishop or a cardinal. They have information on the authentic of who the saint is and what um, body part the relic came from. There are three classes of relics, first class, second class, and third class. A first class relic is always a body part of the saint. It has to be from their body. So we, we have classified all these relics. We've cataloged them, including uh, what makes them a first class relic. And it's usually bone. Uh, but it's also ashes, it's hair, flesh, um, and, you know, just a few other sort of categories like that. Stefanoff went on to explain that any relic related to Jesus or Mary is also considered a first-class relic. One of the parish's most valuable relics in the display is the flagellation pillar. The holy manger, the cross, the flagellation pillar that we have up there, those were all brought from Jerusalem by St. Helen, the mother of Constantine, back to Rome. Touching any devotional item, such as a rosary or a medal, to a first or second class relic creates a third class relic. According to Father Paul Kalchek, 
as many men and women have found solace and consolation from visiting the graves of much-loved deceased family members, many Christians have found inspiration and spiritual aid from venerating the remains or other relics of deceased saints. Stefanoff reminds people we're not worshiping the saints or their relics. We don't worship them, we don't adore them, but we venerate them, and that is what we're doing today. And who knows, we hope that through the will of God, we have a lot of miracles happen. The biblical woman with the issue of blood believed merely touching the fringe of Jesus' garment would heal her, and she was right. Christine Christlieb, Church Militant Evening News, Detroit. If you're interested in venerating the crown of thorns, you can find it at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris the first Friday of every month and every Friday during Lent. But when we come back, this state protects the lives of those who can't defend themselves. And another state defends kids from doctors wanting to mutilate them. Stay tuned, all that and more up next. Thank you for watching the first half of Church Milton Evening News. If you would like to watch the rest of today's episode, please click the link in the description and we'll see you at churchmilton.com. God love you.